Independent Islamic Republic. Anti-government protests in Iran began on September the 16th due to the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini. Apparently she died due to being beaten up by the morality police who detained her for incorrectly tying a headscarf and since then people have been protesting against the hijabi laws as well as protests against Islamic laws in general. This isn't the first time that the Iranian authorities have been confronted with popular discontent but it's certainly the longest mass protests since Iran turned into an Islamic Republic. In a hadisayi ke pish aamad dokhtar javani dar guzash khub hadisayi talkhi bud. Dil ma ham sukht. Bande be sarahat migam in barname rizi kar amrika kar rejim ghasib va jahli sahyunisti va dombal rabai ona. The Iranian authorities have tried everything. They've tried to reduce the intensity of these protesters. I've also been hearing about potentially getting rid of the morality police itself out there, although it's not become official. Despite what Western media has been pumping, there's not been any official statement on that matter. China has just announced a major nationwide easing of its zero COVID policy, a week after protests against the controls spread across the country. Also, you won't be surprised, there's also similar protests happening in China. Although they aren't so massive and they don't have anything to do with Islam, they don't really threaten the Chinese government either, but they do paint China in a negative light. Chinese people have started publicly demanding the lifting of pandemic-related restrictions after the death of a few people in a fire in the Urumqi residential sector last month. Four million residents of Urumqi were ordered not to leave their homes for 100 days. Information then began to spread that due to severe restrictions, many people died. They couldn't get out of the buildings covered by fire since the exits were blocked. The city's authorities deny this version, but their words didn't stop the protests. Starting in Urumqi, they swept the largest cities in China. I can't help but think these protests are manipulated by the system of the beast. I say this because China and Iran have a reputation as authoritarian states that tightly control media and social networks. Which is, which is partially true. But also, China and Iran are long-standing allies on the world stage. They're united by strong trade, economic and political ties. You see, China is Iran's main trading partner. And both countries are considered as strategic allies of Russia, who the West doesn't like very much at the moment due to the Russian special operations over in Ukraine. So I can't help but think these protests out there in Iran and China are very cleverly orchestrated. In Iran, protests began in a small Kurdish city from where Masa Amini was born, the Kurds. They are a national minority in Iran and usually their problems don't fall into the national agenda. Urumqi in China is also heavily separated from the rest of China. It's the administrative center of Xinjiang province with the predominantly Uyghur Muslim population, which the Americans have been playing for a long while and accusing the Chinese government of human rights violations. But unlike the Chinese government, the Iranian government is making a big mistake. The Chinese aren't executing people over the protests, but the Iranian government has warned the demonstrators for a long time. They've told them if they don't calm down, heads will fly. And I really don't think that's the right approach. This morning, Mohsen Shikari was executed. He blocked a street in Tehran on September the 25th and wounded one of the law enforcement officers. If we analyze this case in more detail, then according to the official version, Shikari, for some reason, closed the passage on the street. Then he picked up a machete and went against a member of the Basij unit, an elite military formation consisting of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards, a very powerful entity. Then Shikari was arrested and sent to prison. He was wrong doing that. He had the intention to kill and we are judged by our intention. He was detained for a whole month and then the court case started against him. Following the trial, the court accused him for several serious crimes at once. The largest crime was hostilities against 
Allah. According to the logic of these judges, participating in protests is associated with war against God. And I really don't agree with those charges. People must have the right to protest, even if they are manipulated by outsiders. The case was totally un-Islamic in my view, because Allah has not transferred his powers to authorities on earth. So, so how can we pass such a big judgment and say he went against Allah for partaking in protests? Power on earth must always be challenged for it to be kept in check and ensure that it's working for the people. There's about 28 people waiting execution in Iran and we call on the Islamic Republic of Iran to pardon them because the more they execute, the more angry the streets of Tehran will get and of course, the more advantage the Americans, Israelis and collective West in general will take. They are already spreading a lot of fake news and unfortunately, many protesters are listening. I can speak of one. Apparently the sister of Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei criticized him. She wrote in an open letter supposedly condemning the autocratic rule of her brother, called on Islamic revolutionary guards to lay down their arms and stop the bloodshed. What's interesting about this is the woman herself didn't appear anywhere. The letter was published on social media networks by her son who lives in France. However, whoever was the true author, the protesters liked it. In order to stop the protest, there's only one way. Speak to the people. Do not execute them. Islam is a religion of justice. People have change of hearts. By getting rid of them is not the right way. After all, our war is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Thank you for listening to the Independent Islamic Republic of Foreign Policy Hawk. Assalamu alaikum, shab al khair, shalam alaikum, sayonara, and have a lovely night.